Hello, OK friends. How are you? Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time watching my video, my channel is all about orchids. From what orchids I have, how I grow them, my thoughts on certain orchid topics, to what orchids in my collection are blooming, etc. So if you want to follow along my orchid hobby adventure, please consider subscribing to my channel and turn on the notification. Today we're looking at one of my primary hybrids in the collection. This one is a cross between Luda Manana and Yavo Nice Girl. This orchid has always been a rather consistent performer, and um, since I repotted this orchid toward the end of 2017 or beginning of 2018, it has grown quite a bit. And today this video is going to focus on its progress in 2019 as well as um, its eventual blooms. So back in September 2019, at that time, this orchid was in active growth. And I went back to my folder for this particular orchid for 2018 and 17. I realized that this orchid's active growth season in my area, in my environment, is really summertime. Summer, and then, you know, it would start kind of finish growing around end of September. So during that time, it was, as you can see, it's growing lots of lots of roots and working on a new leaf. So I was pretty happy about that because this orchid really so far has been rather maintenance. And this orchid is in a mixture, inorganic substrate mixture. So the majority of the pebbles are the bigger pebbles. I use the hydrocorn pebbles. The difference between hydrocorn pebbles and leca beads really, really is be the, the shapes. Leca beads are perfectly round and hydrocorn um, is more irregular um, shape to it. I did throw it, threw it, throw in some smaller manto clay pebbles, but for the most part, I wanted to use the bigger pebbles as the main substrate medium because this orchid's roots are thicker. So I really want to ensure that there is number one room, but number two, most importantly, is enough air pockets in the media. And this orchid, the reason I said it's really low maintenance is this one received the same water slash fertilizer uh, re re regimen that my other orchid, ma most of my other orchids get. And it is still, you know, blooming year after year. So it's pretty, I would say it's relatively easy and I would recommend this to any beginner to try it out. This orchid also is fragrant because it has Luda Maniana in its parentage. And I think Yafo Nice Girl is also a fragrant orchid. So this orchid obviously is super fragrant when it, when it, when it blooms in my environment. So the reason I think this orchid is relatively happy in this, um, in this 16 ounce cup in this inorganic substrate is that well it's growing lots of leaves and each leaf is bigger than the, its previous one but at some point when it reaches full mature size all the leaves provided that it's happy would just be the same just would just be as big it won't get you know bigger and bigger indefinitely that's not how orchid works but if it does grow smaller leaves, then that that's a sign to that that it's trying to tell you that it's not happy somehow. <laughs> okay, so it's not until beginning of 2020, so toward the beginning of January, that it started to have signs of you know growth on its existing flower spike, and then toward end of February was when the time that I really saw small buds developing from those spikes. And here you see I use um, flower spike clips without the sticks, without the stakes, because, well, 
one of at least one of the the flower spike was growing directly underneath a relatively large leaf and i know if i don't do something about it potentially the the orchid flower the buds would just always be hidden under the the leaf and i didn't want that so what i did was i kind of yank it up just slightly above the leaf and then i used the the clip to I guess prop it up so that it doesn't fall underneath the leaf and that worked really well I thought about using just simply like a skewer bamboo stick to, to I guess make flower spikes stand up straight but I wasn't sure if I you know the, the way that this orchid is positioned and the way that the roots are grown in the media I was just afraid that if I poke too deep or somehow didn't do do it correctly, don't do it correctly, I may hurt the, some root system. I don't think that would have been the, a huge problem, but because these flower spikes are still pretty short, I didn't think that I want to use any sticks for for this time around. Okay, so moving forward, toward end of March 2020, was when its first flower started to open. And this is one of the first few orchids that started to bloom in the March time frame in my environment. And so I took a bunch of pictures. But you know, if you compare my time the, the, the timing of my orchid blooming blooms, you'll see that my environment, you know, it's later for my or my orchid took longer, I guess, to, to bloom, to start opening its buds. One of the main reason is I, I keep my environment relatively cool during the winter time. But then even going into spring, I still keep it relatively cool. So it, the, the speed of orchid blooming is simply slower because I have a friend of mine also has exact the same cross. Mm, and that one finished no like started blooming in february early february so i guess it just depends on the kind of environment and the temperature because temperature always always plays a huge role in the way that orchids would develop anything leaves roots flower spikes or even when they would bloom so in terms of care, I kind of talked about this earlier, but this orchid receives about quarter cup of water each time. But sometimes I do reduce the water amount down to about one eighth of a cup, depending on if the weather is cooler or if the weather, if we have more humidity, then I kind of reduce the water amount. I know I talked about increasing the fertilizer concentration to 50% and use on this orchid for all year around, but I decided not to do that because I simply got lazy and did not want to keep track of which orchid is getting 50% versus most of my other orchids are getting quarter 25% um, strength of fertilizer. So I kept the quarter strength this year for this orchid and it turned out to be okay um, what you are seeing here is just a video clip when this orchid is in full bloom last year it had three spikes five flowers this year two spike three flowers I think it's fine because the Otis spike I mean it was the first spike that he created after I repotted it and that spike was an old one and it just never quite start you know, never quite grew longer before it put out these two new flower spikes so that one went away but so far i mean this orchid has been a relatively consistent performer slash bloomer i'm pretty happy with it um i think this orchid will continue to stay in this container for quite a few years to come hopefully provided that there's no root system issue inside the media, inside the container. 
um, and you can see there are roots at the reaching the bottom already so that gives me way more flexibility to decide if I just want to do one eighth of a cup or quarter cup uh, you can I can choose a very small amount of water and this orchid would still be fine because when water gets at the bottom and it has roots at the bottom that's really all it would need to properly hydrate itself this is all I have for you today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to get more orchid related videos from my channel, please subscribe and turn on the notification. I want to wish you happy growing and I will talk to you in my next video. Ciao!